years ago, a group of people came together in hopes to give back to the community while integrating their love for music. In 1999, a place at the table was born. Chet TV decided this was the perfect opportunity to show what happens behind the scenes. We have Linda Connell Studley and Bill Studley to thank for this wonderful event, as well as the people who volunteer and perform each year. The main goal for the place at the table is to give back to the community, but also provide sense of belonging. They wanted everyone to feel like they had a place at the table during this festive season. Well, about 20 years ago, the peace songwriters were meeting and we decided that it would be really nice to do something to give back to the community. So we thought, well, obvious, let's do a concert. And uh, we decided that we wanted to do something for the Salvation Army. And after talking to them, we realized that they get a lot of perish non-perishable goods and things like that donated, but what they really needed was money to buy the things that didn't get donated so that they could fill out these hampers for people at Christmas time. So we started the Place at the Table Christmas concert. My husband Bill Studley and I wrote the song, A Place at the Table, and it's been our theme song for the last 20 years. We've, yeah, we've uh, been uh, raising the money for their uh, Christmas food hampers for the full 20 years. You know, we've had a lot of people come and I think uh, part of that is due to the fact that we have no set admission charge. It's basically uh, a cash donation. Uh, we've had people come in and drop a $50 bill in and we've had people come in and drop in change. They give what they can. And I think that that opens it up to being a really wide audience. We have had uh, you know, parents say that, well, this is the only place that they can take their kids because you know, three or four kids, admissions start to rise and uh, so it's the only thing that they can afford to take the kids to. And uh, so that's good too, you know, so it's helping, not just helping the Salvation Army and the people that they help, but it's, you know, it's giving something to the community who come to the concert, an opportunity to kick off the Christmas season with, you know, something that's just friendly, just a friendly atmosphere. I have seen the, at, like in intermission and after the show when you go out and you mingle with the audience and you can just feel the love, you really can. You can just feel the warmth and we hope that that lasts through the Christmas season and beyond. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. But for a little while, everybody's on the same page. Well, the place at the table, the song, is very much about people in our society who are alone or even just having a hard time at Christmas time. And these are the people that people like the Salvation Army help. And food is such a big part of the Christmas season. Food is just a social thing, right, in our culture. So everyone having a place at the table seemed to be a really appropriate kind of sentiment to, to want to include people, you know, to include people in the Christmas season, in, you know, the, the just the overall feeling of, of, of sharing and caring at Christmas. The Salvation Army is known for its continuous giving in our community, especially during the Christmas season. We had a chance to talk to Darius Villier, clergy of the Salvation Army Dawson Creek, and the Director of Community of Family Services. We learn that there is a non-stop need for donations and volunteers, not only in the Christmas season, but also all year round. First and foremost, the Salvation Army, of course, is a faith-based church, and spinning off from that is our community services. Uh, head of this building here runs our food bank, which is open three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. 
At this time of year, of course, we run our Christmas campaigns and our Christmas programs, which include Christmas hampers and toys and our Adopt-A-Family program. Uh, anybody that wish to make donations of food or monetary funds uh, can contact uh, the food bank at 250-782-8669 or uh, can email me and uh, my email is, address is daris underscore filler at can.salvationarmy.org. Every donation is a great help uh, during this time of year because we do put it back into supporting those who are less fortunate in the community. And so every penny counts at this time. Suffice to say, it is a very busy time of year. And so between, we also have our Christmas kettle campaign that runs during this time. And so it's trying to get volunteers for that uh, to man because that monies go back into the community as well and it's used for our Christmas as well as our regular food bank all through the year. One thing that stands out about this event is that it focuses on raising money for the necessities that aren't often donated, like toys, hygiene products, and so much more. This also gives people a chance to bring their families together and see local artists performing for a great cause, all while not breaking the bank. Choosing songs to perform is not an easy task. Linda goes into detail of how the process works. The set, so how we put together the program? Well, that usually ends up being me and Barb. And we basically get uh, from everybody what they're going to do and the type of song, so we know what the tempo is, etc. And then we just sit down one day and we just sort of juggle them around so that it, uh, it uh, figures out. I mean, most songs are three to three and a half minutes, so that's what we use for our timing. And Yeah, it's, uh, it's down to a little scientific formula now. <laughs> no, make the joy of the holidays some of them are some of them are originals and some of them are traditional songs uh, some of them are just simply cover tunes so yeah it's a nice mix and we also have a few people doing uh, recitations so stories little short stories or poems yeah which is kind of kind of fun I just settled down for a long winter's nap went out on the lawn there arose such a clatter, I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. My favorite song. Well, I think the favorite, my favorite one that I wrote was uh, Fly With Angels. And I'm going to be doing that one again this time. Um, and it's, it's a special song to me, and, uh, and it gets requested a lot. So I guess it resonates with other people, too. Um, Fly with Angels, I, I wrote it after uh, reading one of my brother's poems. My brother's uh, also a, a musician and a poet. And uh, he wrote this wonderful poem, It's Snowing Again, about lying on your back and seeing these snowflakes falling towards you. And it just made me, made me think of when we were kids making snow angels and uh, the innocence, the innocence of that, a very beautiful thing. We also got advice from some of the place at the table performers. Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, uh, write, even if you write crap, write every day, all the time, and uh, and don't don't try and do it uh, in your own microcosm. Uh, get out and work with other people. That's uh, that's what uh, really helped me to develop my art. Um, show up. <laughs> we're pretty open. Uh, I mean, we're songwriters, but that doesn't mean if you haven't written a song, you can't come. I mean, even if you want to write a song or have thought about writing a song or maybe write poetry and want to write songs. Yeah, just we, we meet at the Fake Insanity Cafe the second Tuesday of every month at 7 o'clock. 
and it's it's pretty casual. Let's drop in. Um, if you want to meet other songwriters or do a little jamming, then uh, you know more than welcome to to come on. I think one of the things that everybody learned is um, be yourself. And I think, I mean, be authentic is overused, but it really boils down to that. Write something um, and write about what you know, and don't worry too much if it doesn't fit a genre and it, or it doesn't fit what you've heard on the radio. Um, as soon as you start to write for a market, it gets a little bit tough to do. Um, but I think, I think I, I overheard Bill uh, Studley talking about just write. And that's what, we, that's what the group did. When you're on your own, sometimes you might tend to think about sitting down to write a song. But with this, we had one week to come back with something finished and based on homework that we had given. Sometimes we would draw a word out of a hat and that's what was homework. So um, there was a good point made earlier that you know, practice your craft a little bit, but then come out to a group like this or a coffee house and there's some in Fort St. John, there's some in Dawson Creek and just do it. And once you do, you, you get that feedback, it spurs that, mo that feeling of this is legitimate and then you keep doing it. But yeah, it's, um, it's something that if when you, as soon as you share it, it changes the whole energy around it. And I think that's what the, is great about the songwriters group is that um, your peers go, I like it. And then, you know, you go home and you do another one. Joining the Peace Songwriters has had great benefits to the artists, not only as performers, but also as members of the community. I'm a board member of the Songwriters Club, and I've been here for five years. Well, because I wanted to write more drum songs. I don't play the guitar and I don't play any of the instruments, but I play the drum. So I was inspired to come and then just um, make some songs on my drum. I think my favorite song of the night of all the times is the sing-alongs that we do. We, I think tonight we're doing Frosty the Snowman and then last year was Jingle Bell Rock. So I just love those where everybody gets in and sings along with us. The impact that it has is that I help the community, right, raise money, raising money for the Salvation Army, making sure that people get enough food to eat, and so the impact of giving has really changed my life with, you know, helping with that. The favorite part of the whole thing, just watching the people's faces, watching them have fun, um, singing along, drinking our famous hot cider, just the overall ambience. Yes, there are multiple reasons of why you should be excited for this event, but this year something special is happening. It is the 20th anniversary for Place at the Table. Place at the Table artists reminisce on their fondest memories they've had over the years. God, my best memory, yipe. I think maybe it was really early on when uh, John and Rose McDonald brought their kids, uh, the uh, Almighty Lights, to come and do their, uh, their uh, black light performance. And they did that for several years. But Place at the Table was the first place they ever did that. And when they got off of the stage, here are all these very young people and they just did their best and the crowd loved them and their eyes were as big as saucers and they said, oh, they really liked us. <laughs> they were so excited. They were so excited by that. And that's, that's a definitely a really good memory for me. I guess my fondest memory was uh, about uh, 2008 uh, when we, uh, we raised well in excess of a thousand dollars. There was a, a really excellent crowd that night. It was at the old K-Pack and uh, we filled the house and the audience, I guess, were feeling particularly generous. And uh, I think we raised uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of $1,300 that night. Our fondest memory, oh wow, there's been so many. Um, I think when we've had the young people participate, we had one group in particular um, called the Almighty Lights. And they um, did a black um, black light presentation uh, with songs and that was probably one of the ah, one of the greatest memories um, that that we had 
with the young people. So it's it's always good to see, as they say, people coming coming out, and uh, no matter how uh, what genre they they represent, it's it's always neat to see what the what they're literally going to bring to the table. With a smile, he said, "I hope they're still dessert." And after that. Greg Wanling, one of the original founders of the Peace Songwriters Group, played a significant part in the event. Without the Peace Songwriters Group, it is unlikely that there would be a place at the table. Um, I was one of the original founders, along with Dory Braun and a couple of others, in 1999. And yes, we still had, you know, there was buildings and cars and everything back then in this town and paved streets. Um, it was a long time ago, but yeah, we originally um, had just been writing songs and getting together in somebody's living room, and we wanted to see if it could expand. So we started um, just reaching out into the community who were artists that wanted to um, work on the craft of songwriting, and everybody just kind of glommed onto it. And we had people that hadn't played for years, professionals coming back to the scene, and people who had never played. And pretty soon we had, I think it might have peaked at about 12 or 14 people that would show up each, each night. And we would basically do a round table and um, the person would perform their songs and they could choose if they wanted a critique of it or just play it and move on. And out of that, a lot of cool projects came about from um, just sharing the ideas and the homework that we would do. And it evolved into a place at the table when some people, uh, Bill and Linda, that, uh, that will be performing, um, took the idea of using, using the skills and the crafts that we had learned in, uh, in a different way. And that was to attract attention to the cause um, uh, and became a place at the table that everyone should have that place. And that's kind of where we're at, at the 20th anniversary. It's the culmination of everyone's efforts to reach out into a community as artists and say, listen, we've got, this is the message, we've got some songs and it's entertainment, but let's work together to kind of get, get people, um, you know, something extra, you know, in the community. So that's where it's at. Hard as old blue troubles up in the driveway. He says, I'm sorry that I missed your winter supper. For me, I get so nervous. I love it when it's over. Um, I feel really good at that point. You know, I think basically what, what I like the most is, um, is, is that tension that comes from putting a show together. And when you see the community come out, then you go, wow, this is real. And when it, when it comes to fruition, the audience um, is giving you that feedback. I think that's what I like the most. I, I, I like doing the setup and the homework, but I like that feedback from the audience and, and that kind of back and forth that, as an MC, I intend to play into as well. I like, I like the audience to be involved, not just be a, a witness, silent, you know, sitting there. Um, I think like anything that becomes an annual event, it hits bumps early on where it just, um, even with a good word of mouth and advertising, it's just slow to get started sometimes, but, um, I think the only hurdle was is is uh, volunteering and people that volunteer, it's just trying to juggle it in everybody's lives and put enough time into it because um, you know everyone has lots on their plate, especially you know around the holiday seasons. So I guess eventually, um, uh, once that momentum picked up, it got easier and easier each year. People now look forward to it, and you see a lot of the same faces each year, and they bring new people. So I I don't really think there was uh, much of a much of a hurdle once the, that momentum got going. With 20 years of history behind a place at the table, our minds wandered to what hopes there were for the future of this event. Um, I'm hoping that a, a whole new wave of, of, of young writers that um, will come out and, and do the same thing that we did originally 20 years ago. Um, bring a new energy, bring some new song styles, and, uh, and kind of uh, let a, a younger group experience what we've been experiencing. Um, that's what I would like to see is, uh, is the craft continue and the show continue, um, but not, not, you know, not stagnate, you know, always growing, you know, and I think that it's going gonna, it's gonna to take some new writers to, to come in and, and help with that along the way as, as the uh, people that have been here for 20 years would definitely invite you know, someone from someone with a new a new uh, approach to come in and, and join this group for sure. 
Oh, gee, I, I, it, it would be nice to see this uh, be continued, you know. Um, I, I would hate to see it not. As I say, it's such an opportunity as songwriters to give back to the community. And, you know, and it's been interesting, as I say, how that's evolved throughout the years. And we just hope to leave that legacy so that if it's, it's not us doing it, that there'll be somebody else that will pick up the torch and keep it going. A group of strangers decided one day to follow their desires and become the songwriters they always hoped to be, never knowing that one day they would do more than just that. They would also provide for their community and find lifelong friends. Thank you to Bill and Linda, all the songwriters, volunteers, and all those who attend each year for their hard work and dedication for making this event the best it can be. Sure, Merry Christmas Dawson Creek. Chetwin, Hudson Hope, Fort St. John, whoever's going to see this. A very Merry Christmas and all the best in 2020. Merry Christmas to everyone. <laughs> uh, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to everybody watching. I'd like to wish everybody out there in TV land a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Ixe Nichiwaganak. <laughs> start very basic. We do lots of edges and three turns and just basic skills and then work up into the more interesting stuff, I guess the kids would call it, more of the intricate spins and jumps. So we kind of do a bit of everything with them. I'm doing doubles, so that's like a higher jump and then just like spins and footwork and stuff. Yeah. What's the hardest part about this? Um, definitely the double loop. Yeah. 
Yeah. Because you have to go up on one foot and do two rotations in the air and then land on the same foot. From Ontario West, yes. Oh, it's amazing. Um, I guess your television movies now. 